Hi guys, my name is Juliana Starnes, and today I am going to be showing you guys the Anthropocene Reviewed, reviewing the text PowerPoint. Um, my chapter that I chose is Teddy Bears, and yeah, I'm just going to be explaining it. So the way that I'm going to go over this is I'm going to start with the table of contents, and I'm going to just explain it really quick. I'm going to have slide three through four as the past slash main idea. Slides five through eight are going to be paragraphs one through five. This includes like the annotation, like the rhetorical devices and all of that. Um, slides 9 through 10 is paragraph 6 through 10. Slides 11 through 14 is going to be paragraphs 11 through 14. Um, slides 15 through 16 is paragraphs 14 through 16. And slide 17 is just going to be my overall rating of the chapters and how or if I agreed with um, John Green. Okay, guys. So first, I'm going to be starting off with the past, which is basically just equal to purpose, audience, speaker, and situation. So starting off the purpose in this, I'm just going to read it and then kind of explain my own personal take on it. So Green explains how the root of the word originates from, as well as including the story of a bear bringing up past president, Teddy Roosevelt, and the contemporary state of this fleshy toy, while including animal extinction and a traumatic twist. So I feel like the purpose of, honestly, this entire chapter was kind of just to lead up to what's happening with animal cruelty and animal extinction. And I feel like I wasn't expecting it to turn into that, especially since he started off with like, the root of the word and where it came from and then honestly like quickly into it i probably about paragraph three you start to realize that he's like super into this like animal cruelty aspect and honestly the torturous things that has happened to these bears um the audience there is no specific audience possibly targeting maybe to a younger age group as it's kind of leaned towards a toy um also the younger age group tends to possibly be less knowledgeable with animal cruelty so maybe um, the speaker is obviously John Green, and the situation is the origin and backstory behind the teddy bear. Okay, so next, moving on, we have the main idea, and I'm just going to read it. Green's main idea is the overall making and story of teddy bears as a whole, including stories of experiences with them and the connection these bears have with the current state of animal extinction. So I just included like a small little portion up here from basically where he starts off with saying, like, here's the story of the teddy bear. And this quickly turns into where you think it's just going to be like, the origin and how teddy bears are made and you can quickly see how literally into like the fourth sentence it's already talking about like chased a bear for hours and you'll just kind of start to already listen and hear about the torture that begins happening okay so next we have paragraph one which is just the intro um again i've kind of already explained this that he just kind of begins these paragraphs by speaking about the root of the word including an excerpt from harry potter which kind of surprised me honestly um, and then he kind of just explains the reasoning behind like Europeans using the word bear, like very much doesn't have much to do with what's about to happen, but it's just good to include. Um, okay, so paragraphs two to three, he then transitions into a more violent take quickly after and explains the torture bears endured throughout the centuries in Europe. Shortly after, he brings Shakespeare in and begins quoting in Macbeth to use certain instances involving a bear. So if we look up at the top, the first portion of the screenshot of text. Um, we can easily see how here it says in the last sentence, has Henry had a bear pit made at the palace of Whitehall? Um, and if you look up a little bit farther, it says then attacked by dogs until they were injured or killed, or they'd be placed in a ring with a bull to fight to death. So it very, like it transitions quickly from going to the root of a word and something that you wouldn't believe would happen out of this. And then it quickly goes into the devastation and the torture that bears are you know, being tormented with in Europe at this actually state. Um, moving on to paragraphs four to five, the general story changes and it's no longer a simple root explanation. It now is like something regarding animal cruelty. And I feel like this is kind of where he brings in the state of what's happening right now, where he wants to focus on, which is obviously the cruelty portion. Um, on to the rhetorical devices, historical allusions by bringing up Shakespeare in the paragraph. It sets the audience to wonder if that's a factor in the impending story, which obviously it didn't end up being, but I just thought it was a little bit interesting how he decided to bring up Shakespeare in this. Um, next, by using keywords such as a phrase and to call by my name, it sets the tone of the paragraph to be somewhat worrisome and question the significance of this story. Um, just for me, when I saw that to call by name and afraid, it kind of felt like I was you know, a little bit worried for what was going to happen. As you can see, it says, still it's a bit odd that our children now commonly cuddle with a stuffed animal. We used to be afraid to call by name. So it's kind of contrasting the fact that a cute little teddy bear like this used to be something that people were afraid of and people actually tormented because of this fear, you know? Okay, so paragraph six through 10 kind of have the same 
moral story around them. Um, same thing with animal cruelty, except he does introduce the deaths of these bears, which is actually 3,000. So that was a little bit of a surprising factor. But that does come into play in the last few paragraphs when he's talking about the extinction of these bears. It's going to relate back to that. Um, some of the rhetorical devices that I saw were as uses juxtaposition by contrasting that although the bear is tied up to a tree, almost barely semi-conscious, practically about to die, Roosevelt refuses to shoot the bear almost as if he's contrasting his own self. Um, I think personally it's super ironic that you're going to see that a bear is tied up and semi-conscious, so you're okay with doing that, but you're not okay with shooting it. It's kind of just doesn't make sense because if it's tied and semi-conscious, it's practically about to die, so it's kind of the same thing as shooting the bear. So that doesn't make sense why he's refusing to do one, but being allowed to do the other. Um, next, I think it's somewhat ironic as well that as Green is describing a candy shop with a positive, um, he quickly finishes the sentence with immediate hit right after speaking about shooting a bear. So I think that also comes into play because shooting and hit are both very a little bit of a tone word. And I think that that kind of has something to do with each other. Moving on, we have paragraphs 11 through 14, and I'll just read it really quick. As the author shears away from a cruelty portion now, he continues speaking back again to his childhood and bringing up his past moments with this bear. He explains how these bears made him feel and the emotional attachment that he had with this inanimate object. Some literary devices that I noticed is somewhat a sense of conflict as Green explains that the bear has helped him relax and soothe himself, but quickly following that with every time that he would touch the bear, the effect was no longer the same. Um, he kind of just made a point that instead of offering comfort and peace, the touch of this teddy bear now leads him to realize he will never be a kid again, causing it no longer to be a peaceful touch, but a traumatic touch. And instead of resembling a positive, the bear re resembles a somewhat sense of sadness now. Um, if you look in the second portion that I screenshotted, you can kind of just see what I'm talking about. It says that, but I found that this didn't really work anymore, that whatever had soothed me about this soft and silent creature no longer did. So it kind of just is a little bit interesting that he would say something like, Moving on, we have some of the rhetorical devices, and we can just see from this quick excerpt, represents a simple sense of personification by explaining this love a lot bear was in a picture book starred as an aggressive bear, giving this bear a sense of emotion and feeling. Um, being aggressive is definitely a certain feeling and an emotion, so putting that on a bear, which is an animal, um, obviously can represent personification in this. Moving on, we have a change in tone. Personally, I saw this, which kind of stuck out to me a little bit. The emotional tone represents words such as dad, the polar bears, as the little girl explains to her father about the passing of polar bears and the importance of turning off the light in hopes to save them. As he goes back to the animal cruelty part, his daughter has now been influenced by the teaching of carbon footprints and electricity uses to stop these extinction of these animals. So it goes from this small young child telling her father that we need to turn off the light because the polar bears. And I think it's a little bit interesting because it goes from the beginning of the story where these people were perfectly okay with shooting bears and torturing bears. And now we have this young little girl who's telling her father to turn off the lights because she's worried about these, you know, polar bears and stuff. So very much a change in tone and switching to a sad portion of a tone, definitely. Um, coming up to the last little bit, we have paragraphs 14 through 16. And we see that the shift changes and becomes about a young girl who's concerned about the overall extinction, like I had already mentioned. She just realizes that these are in need of our help and the torture, whether it become physical or lack of resources, has sadly driven them to almost barely just extinction. So in this next excerpt, we can see that the reader annotates this text and they can imagine that the Arctic with no polar bears left is offering a sense of an emotional appeal to this young girl almost as if we can relate to her, almost as if we understand her pain. And we realize that when she's saying to her father, turn off the light, there's animals out there that are suffering because of this. It almost makes you want to go turn off your light because she's just connecting to you on an emotional level with the words that she's using, especially at such a young age. Um, when we look up down at the bottom, we can see that questioning if an animal is cute will have a higher chance of surviving especially since this is one of the last sentences, it kind of just made me a little bit questionable. When it says, can cuteness save a species? I'm dubious. Very strange how we're going from talking about the cruelty, the terrorization, the animals that are going extinct, and then we're talking about cuteness, possibly giving them a savior. Very interesting way of changing. Okay, so lastly, we have John Green's rating, which is 2.5 out of 5. And personally, I would agree with this. I think the chapter jumped around a little bit too much for my liking. And I think that if he wanted to really speak about animal cruelty, he could have brought up so much more. And I think personally, something that I would have added if this was me was the difference in cruelty back then towards the cruelty now, as back then we had 
people shooting them and just doing this for fun. And now we have, you know, lack of resources and our electricity usage, which is killing these animals. So I think that that definitely could have been a point made. But thank you so much for listening. And yeah.